Okay, so this part of the, uh, this video is going to be about the sliding filament theory, again, which you need to know, but are not realistically going to be asked to describe in a huge amount of detail, uh, just because there won't be enough marks available for AO1. So, uh, the sliding filament theory, remember that we said that uh, muscle is made of two proteins, actin and myosin. So, actin is actually quite a complex little protein. It's made of actin fibres, which I've shown here in black, with a little spirally round, and sometimes you see on diagrams two of these spirals of uh, another protein called tropomyosin. That's a little bit confusing because it's nothing to do with myosin, it's part of the actin filament. And uh, another one which I've represented by this little fluffy uh, yellow ball called troponin. So, uh, the role of the troponin and tropomyosin is that the tropomyosin uh, covers up binding sites on the actin and the troponin determines whether that tropomyosin is away from the binding site or covering it. We've also got our other thicker filament, so I've done it in a big, bigger, fluffier pipe cleaner, called myosin. And this has little projecting arms all over it, so it looks a little bit furry. If you were looking at it down a microscope, it would look a little bit furry. And they've got little myosin, what we call myosin heads. So we've got a myosin head, a myosin arm, and a myosin filament. And obviously there's a region of overlap uh, between the myosin and actin uh, within that A-band. So this is the A-band. This is this region of, of overlap in the eye band here. So the first sort of step in muscle contraction is the influx of calcium ions caused by the nerve impulse. And the calcium ions bind to this troponin protein. And that moves, it changes, we say it changes conformation of the tropomyosin. So the tropomyosin actually then moves away from the binding sites on the actin. This means that our uh, actin, which has uh, uh, got ATP attached to it, will break down the ATP into ADP and phosphate. It remains attached to the myosin head and moves the myosin head into what we call the cocked position. Now that's a position from which it can then bind to the actin by these exposed binding sites. As the ADP and phosphate leave, well, I'm hoping this, no. as they leave the myosin heads, that causes the power stroke where the actual myosin head moves and takes therefore with it the actin, so the actin slides along. We then get an attachment of ATP that detaches the myosin head and moves them back, ready to be cocked by the ADP and phosphate uh, formation. Again, as long as there are calcium ions present, we can then attach the ADP and phosphate leave, we get the power stroke moving the actin along, ATP detaches the head and moves it back to the cocked position. So overall, the actin filaments are kind of moving along in a kind of a ratchet mechanism. So they're not moving along sort of nice slidey, slidey, slidey. They're moving along one step, two steps, three steps. Uh, so it's called the sliding filament theory and a ratchet mechanism. Okay, that's it.